Hello everybody and in this video we are going to be discussing about that how I created this whole runter inside of Blender. Now we will also be discussing about that how I modeled this whole car and the lighting setup and afterwards we will be moving towards the compositing and how I composited the whole scene which is which makes a drastic difference trust me. Now I also wanted to point this out that this, this render got 34 likes and got into the best creations in uh, the Road Builders Discord server which I am very grateful for. Now once we have that out of the way, let's just get, get started with the video. Now the first thing I just wanted to do is start with the basics, which is uh, starting out with how it, with the method that I used to create, create the car. Now the method I used uh, for is the blueprint mod blueprint modeling method, where you basically take a blueprint and I divide it into four parts, which is the front, side, back, and the top. And I place them evenly, and and, uh, and I place them so they are so they are accurate and they are accurate to each other. So their scale is accurate to each other. Now how I did that was I added in a simple cube. I scaled it to the for example let's say one of the references let's let's say the top one. I scale the cube roughly, and then I match all of the other references to match the cube, uh, to, and they match the dimensions of the cube. So that way, all of the my uh, all of my um, all of my all of the uh, references or the yes, all of the references are accurate and, and are is uh, size accurate. Now the next thing I wanted to move towards is about uh, let's see let's see yeah let's talk about the panel cuts over here. How I create these beautiful panel cuts? Let's just move towards that. Now for this demonstration, I will just add in a simple cube just like so i will just delete these parts i'm just creating this so uh, for demonstration purposes i am creating a very uh, generic looking car shape as cars have many cars have many uh, you could say that curve shape so i'm just creating one so you can get an idea of what you could expect when creating panel gaps so let's just say that you want to add a panel gap in the middle so how you would do, how would you do that so firstly you will add a loop cut then you will bevel it and now here comes the best part you'll just mark it sharp or or if you don't have the hard off smell add-on you can simply press shift plus e and uh, harden it up but i'll use the hard option as it just i'm just used to it now what you will do is you will basically extrude it along normals which you can do by all plus pressing pressing all plus e and then extrude faces along normals and extrude it until you have a very nice and clean looking panel cut now, as you can see, this is a very simple example, and we'll also be moving towards to a very um, much more advanced example, which we'll do that right now. So, let's say you want to add a uh, panel cut from over here to over here. Now, the first thought would be to just add a uh, loop cut over here, but you cannot really add a loop cut, as you can see here. The loop cuts loop cuts don't work that way. So now you have two options. You can simply add in the knife tool. Place it over here at the one vertex at the starting point and place it at the ending point and press enter. Now you have a perfect panel gap. Uh, if you have a per perfect edge loop, but as you can see, it has already added uh, shading issues, but don't worry, we'll, we'll be fixing that. Now, but what I prefer is using the J option. So select these two and then press J. So it will just join them together. It is much more accurate, but sometimes it doesn't work. So just try it for, so first try this method. If it doesn't work, then move towards the knife tool. Now what we can do is do what we did last time. Bevel it, a, a, we mark it sharp and extrude uh, along normals. But as you can see, it is just ruining the shape. So what you can do is extrude it a bit and then press all plus S. So it doesn't ruin the shape as much. And of course you can, by doing some fine tuning, we can just fix this shape uh, just like so. As you can see, the shape looks much better now. Not really perfect, but I would say it looks much better and it is possible. Now, now the thing is that the, what are left is the shading issues. Now the way we can fix them is playing with the topology or with playing with the geometry. But you can see we do not have many, a lot of geometry here. So we, what we'll do is extend it outwards and that will probably be uh, and uh, this is a much more practical case as uh, you will have an extended geometry in uh, the actual car model and not just this whole shape now what you can just do is press the to uh, select this whole uh, edge loop and then get rid of it now, as you can see the 
Oh yeah, as you can see here, the shading in this part is perfect. Now, why was it causing issues in the first place? Now that is because uh, this is because there was a triangle, and triangles sometimes can cause shading issues. Now, if you go back now, as you can see here, you may have noticed that these cuts are not very clean, and as you can see, this is they have a very curvy point over here, which we don't want. So, how we can fix that is simply delete the bottom faces, as you can see here. Uh, I yeah, as you can see here. These now, as you can see, the, uh, they are very sharp. Now, to fix the shading here, we'll do the same thing. We'll select these two edges, extrude them, and get rid of this one. As you can see, the shading is now perfect. And you can, uh, and these, this is how very simple, and this is how simple it is to create panel gaps. Now, the next thing I want to discuss about, I would say, is one of the most talked about uh, uh, advice, and the most advice is is this one that, that I've given. And I've seen many people given this, but I haven't seen well, many people uh, follow this, which is using a lot of references. Now, when I say a lot, I mean a lot. Now, to manage all of my references, I used a software known as PureRef. It is a great software to manage all of your references. You can drag and drop all of your references into one place. Now, what I'm talking about is this one. As you can see, there I have i've taken i've used a lot of references for example the i've, I've used the uh, i've taken the references for everything even the minor things for example i've taken the references for the main body structure then i've taken the references for the back front and everything like that i've also taken the reference for the tires uh, front light back rear light and the rear mirrors as i think and the brake calibers i think the, the, that's what they are called but i'm not sure so pardon me so as you can see, I've taken references for all, all, all of all of the things, even a shader node over here. So yeah, now I just cannot stress this as much, but please use as many references as possible if you want to get the best results. I would say that if you use uh, these many references, then you will get I would say ninety nine percent of the perfect results. Now the next thing I want to discuss about is uh, if I just can close it. Yeah, I think we don't need to really close it. Uh, we can just discuss about it over here first i'll just delete this hole yeah now what i want to discuss about is how i created the tires as you can see here these are the tires that i've created and now how i created them basically treating the tires was very, was pretty simple what it basically did was basically you can see a pattern going on over here so there are these uh, yes you know there are these five parts uh, sorry and both now there's uh, these five parts as you can see i'm talking about these parts uh, there are five of these this is the first one this is the second one there's a third one fourth one five fifth one and, and as you can see here there are five of these parts so what we can basically do is create this one whole shape and then what we can do is use the spin tool to uh, duplicate them to all of these to, uh, to all duplicate it to all five of the times and what we can be say and what i basically this is what i basically did uh i just duplicated them all four times so uh i didn't have really have to model it again and this is i would say this is the case with the 99 percent of the tires you just have to create one segment and then you can do all of the things is just very simple now the next thing i want to discuss about uh, is the yeah i want to i want to discuss about the this material of the rear mirrors so if I can jump over to the Blender window and go into the render view mode, as you can see here, how I created this amazing material. So it looks that the shell or the outside is very glossy, but the inside is very rough and uh, yeah, it's very rough. It looks like that. So basically what's going on over here is there are simply just three nodes. First, we have a Warner texture. And the important thing and the most important thing over here is that I've set the randomness to zeros that's how i got the result otherwise it just gives this very bad result and i've used the color input to the factor of the color ramp play around with the colors or the values a little bit and then set it prevent it to a bump node and the base color and i also set the roughness to all the way down and set the clear coat to all the way up so to get the nice glossy effect as you can see over here now the next thing i want to discuss about is the material for this mirror for the uh, windows yes for the windows now this is a very simple material as you can see here i basically added in a glass bsdf and a transparent bsdf i connected it to the two mix shaders and i used a fernell load 
uh, which is uh, and the, this may make sure that node vector is connected to this whole setup as you can see here this is the whole node setup great now one more thing i also want to talk about is the uh, car paint of the car now it is basically very simple nothing crazy going on it is also the same thing first we have a warner texture connected to the color ramp uh, to the uh, yeah connected uh, to the separate xyz and the combined xyz and they're going on to the normal mode normal uh, input and then we have the same thing for the bump as you can see and then we have i've set the roughness point, point 2.4 i i just wanted to go for more of a matte finish rather than glossy i've also set the metallic to a much a almost 100 almost one but not completely and as you can see here, these are all of my settings just like so now the next thing i want to discuss about is we will go over to a bit of the back now in the back as you can see it isn't really finished but uh, yeah there are just fine there are some of the details that i have completed yet but it's all good now as you can see i want to discuss about these backlights and how they look really nice now there are just two layers to this first is the uh, first i don't really know what they are called but there there's definitely a name for this as i'm far as i'm aware first we have this layer and next we have the other layer which is which can which is which consists of the whole led and everything like that first let's talk about this first one so how what is this so as you can see here it is basically a glossy bsdf and a transparent bsdf connected to connected to the layer weight node and to the color ramp and you uh, using the mix shader we have combined it all into the material output and then the inner part of the second layer if i can just click it yes it's basically just a as you can see here yeah first what we had in is the normal i used uh, some noise textures in the normal and it's connected into, into the bump of the goat value i just thought that give a really nice effect and then we have a, a, there's a normal map going on over here with the uh, no boron texture and i separated it so it gives a much more accurate result if you didn't know if you do not separate it uh, sometimes you do not get the you, you do not get the more the most accurate results and then I, what I simply did was added in uh, yeah so the emission is in this one as you can see the, the emission the emissive part is very different the emissive part is just has a uh, red color sent and the strength set to very high nothing very crazy going on or nothing gradient but it gets the job done and it's look and it looks really great so yeah i think that is pretty much it for the car i think yeah hmm yeah i think that cover, cover that that just finishes up with the car and let's just move towards to the environment and the whole lighting and everything like that first we'll start off with the base which is basically a noise te two noise textures connected to color ramps and then one is connected into the bump of the normal of this normal and one is connected to the base color to set the color now as you can see this just gives a very nice and a very subtle effect as you can see here and in, yeah as you can see here, this is a very nice effect it, this is like a road type effect and it just really suits this render for the lighting there are just two main lights and nothing else the first one is a cylinder and it deleted the top faces and i said an emission shader just like so nothing crazy the first one is the top one is just a, just a circle with a emission shader and it is much more smaller and uh, at the top of the car so it gives and it so it just uh, uh, points out the uh, what can I say the points out the uh, the shape and the whole shading of the car great so now the last thing that is left is compositing now I'll just pull over this compositing uh, software or I should say the website I use this is the name now I won't try to pronounce it and uh, as I know I will but butcher it up but as you can see here this is how it looks with the compositing this is before and this is the after as you can see this is makes a drastic difference now what i did was i used a vibrance uh, i set the vibrance to 100 saturation to 45 and played with the tint value a bit i think i can also go down a little bit more yeah i think this looks much better and then i've set the i played around with the contrast black values highlight shadows just it's so this basically it's just a matter of playing with sliders until you get what you like and until uh, you get the effect that looks the best and the most realistic 
so yeah i think that covers up everything and i hope and if you have learned something new then make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like these and uh, yeah i will see you around later have a great day